you realize, I mean, it's not something that you know beforehand, but when the novel is done, when it's more or less finished, uh, sometimes you, well, now I realize, well, at least that's my case, I'm, all, I'm, I'm speaking always for myself, obviously, um, is it this, because of these paragraphs, I, I wrote this novel. Because of this, this couple of pages, for instance, I realize that now. And then sometimes you think, well, <clears throat> I'm not a poet, I don't write poetry, never wrote poetry, not even when I was a young man uh, uh, or a teenager. And, um, and then uh, you say, well, I had to surround this with something else, with something huge, with a, an architecture to hold it, to make it acceptable. But what I want is the reader to look mainly at those pages. But I have to, do, I have to distract him or her uh, with stories, plots, dialogues. All that stuff. All that stuff. Um, but that is something you realize when you finish the novel. You, it's not something that you have in your mind previously. Obviously. I see. It's not a premeditated thing to do that would be vile, I suppose. <laughs> And uh, no, it's not that way. But sometimes you say, well, yeah, um, the justification for this whole thing are these two pages. My, my method of, for, for writing is a, a very suicidal one. <laughs> All methods for writing are suicidal, probably, I think. Probably, but you feel more suicidal the one you chose or the one, or the one that chose you. Anyway, and uh, what I usually do is, uh, as I've said on many occasions, probably if some people have read interviews, I've been saying that for many years, and it's true. It's, it's still true, even within, with the more, more recent novels. Um, you know, one of the problems with novelists is that we never learn, we never learn the job. Uh, <laughs> No, you learn you haven't learned anything. Yeah. And, and, and even if, if, if the previous book or some of the previous books have been praised by people and people enjoy them and all that, and, uh, and not even that is reassuring in my case because, it, oh, well, yeah, I was lucky with that one. Uh, or people were misled or, so, or, or something, but... Uh, that doesn't uh, guarantee anything for this one that I'm starting now. But what I was going to say is that uh, my usual way is, uh, uh, I've said on many occasions that, of course, there are all kinds of writers, but there are some who write with a map, as it were. That is, they know exactly, with a chart. But they, they know exactly before starting a novel, they, they have the full, the full story in their minds. They know exactly what's going to happen to every character, when, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is certainly not my case. I think if, if I knew a complete story before starting writing a novel, I wouldn't write it because I said, what a bore. Uh, I, I like to find out as I write, and, uh, and, I, and I mentioned on many occasions as well that the word to invent, which is the same in English and in Spanish and in many other languages, inventar in Spanish, to invent in English comes, both, in both cases, comes from Latin invenire. And invenire, originally in Latin, meant to find out, to discover. And then, to a certain extent, to invent, in, in our sense, in, in, in the sense of the word in English or in Spanish, Etymologically, uh, etymologically, at least, has to do with the idea of finding out, which is, which is what I like to do. I start writing with a compass only. I don't have a map. I just have a compass. So I'm heading north, as it were. I know more or less where I would like to go, but I don't know the way, not at all. And, not even, and I don't know whether I shall find a desert in the middle or a cliff or a, or, or a river or or a jungle or what, and I must cross it, and, uh, and I find them. Whereas the one with the map knows that he will find a jungle in a desert and a cliff, but he knows beforehand, and he knows very well when and how. And then the thing is that I don't know exactly um, how I do my novels. In fact, I don't know, I, don't, I realize every time I realize, I don't know how a novel is written. I don't know how people do write them. Uh, and in fact, I, I don't know how I do write them myself. Uh, all of a sudden, you happen to have 300 or 400 or 500 even pages and say, 
oh, this looks like a novel. But I work page by page. I never make a draft of five or 10 pages in a row, no. I make one page, I work on that. I still use a typewriter, and then I, bring the, I take out the piece of paper, then I make corrections by hand and uh, erase things and arrows and uh, suppressions and additions and everything. Then I retype it again once, twice, three times, four times, five times sometimes, until I think, well, I can't, I can't do it better than this, or I'm tired, which is also <laughs> possible. <laughs> and then that page generally goes to the printer, like that. And then one page after another. And, and I never reread the whole thing until, uh, until the, the novel is finished. Because if I say, oh, come on, I have 200 pages now. Shall I reread them and say, Shall I what, ruin them by reading them? What, what if I found them awful? Now, now the whole thing would be ruined, and the, I, would, I wouldn't have, the, I wouldn't have the, 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 the faith to go on if, if I find, so I won't read them, and just one by one, one by one, as if it was each, as if it was the only one. Um, I mean, I concentrate on that one page, I do it as much as, 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 as best as I can, but it has no, relations, no re real relationship to the next one or to the previous one. So to me, it is rather mysterious that in the end, as some readers, very kind readers, have told me, um, some of them even say, I, I couldn't put it down, and your, your novels are so seamless. <laughs> and I say, oh, dear me. Uh, <laughs> it's exactly the opposite way. There is one thing against them that plays against them, I think, which is because of their knowing exactly what, what is going to happen throughout the novel and what effect they will need or what suspense they will need at a given moment, they are more foreseeable, they are more predictable. And sometimes they don't realize because they already know the ending. You can, the reader can guess the ending much easy, in a much easier way than, 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 than in the novels with, uh, of, 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 of the writers with only a compass because they have improvised, they didn't even know the ending. So it's very difficult that the reader may, may predict the ending if the writer himself didn't even know it, maybe three page, uh, 30 pages away from the ending. And I think that one of the reasons why we write and read novels is that in a way we need something, even if it's fictional, even if it never did happen, to be told once and for good, once and forever. And the only thing that no one can contradict or deny is fiction. Mm. Someone could come and say, I mean, Ma Madame Bovary died the way she did. And no one can come and say, oh, I disagree. <laughs> she didn't die, <laughs> or she died, she died, uh, she stabbed herself. She faked uh, her death. And no, or happily. she stabbed <laughs> herself. And then, no, no one can do that. Um, so that Madame Bovary did die, died the way Flaubert decided, and that's the end of it. And, and no one can contradict it. And, uh, and even if it's fiction, even if she didn't really exist, we need the security, you could say, or the comfort of something told for sure, once and for all, and something not told as well forever, because of course you must have in mind that what is not told in a novel shall never be told by anyone. To answer your question, it's not something that I all of a sudden decided, uh, oh, this could be useful for my novels, or no, uh, I, I don't look for subjects for my novels. I usually write, or at least in the, during the last 30 years, I write novels on the same things that do concern me in my life. And uh, the things that I, that make me think. And, uh, and, and some of them are, for instance, secrecy, treason, uh, friendship, betrayal, uh, uh, the impossibility of knowing anything for certain, as I said. Uh, the fact that we, we usually uh, act upon hearsay 
most of the time. The things we do actually witness are very few, very, very few. Oh, there are many, of course. I've, I mean, they, they, I suppose the honest thing would be to say Shakespeare, also because I owe him so much, and I owe him several titles to begin with and many other things. But of course, there are all this, and certainly this is not original at all, but Cervantes is one of my favorites as well, to whom, to a certain extent, by the way, I write via another of my favorite authors whose main work I did translate into Spanish when I, when I was in my 20s, many years ago, um, which is Trish, uh, 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 Lawrence Stern, and I did Tristram Shandy into, into Spanish. That's the kind of bold thing you do when you are in your 20s. And uh, I wouldn't do it now. And, um, and of course, someone else whom I did translate also in the past, and uh, who is certainly one of my conscious influences is Joseph Conrad as well. Uh, so, and Flaubert, is, and Montaigne, and, uh, and also T.S. Eliot, uh, probably one of my favorites and also one of my strongest influences. And uh, critics, are, uh, critics are sometimes very limited and they never think of poets when they read a novelist uh, as a possible influence, unless you state it. And, um, and uh, in my case, I know that I am, I am much influenced by some poets, and one of them is T.S. Eliot. And he's also one of my favorite authors, so you pick. Are you happier when you are in your fictional world? Yeah, you rest in fiction. You have some rest in fiction. It's a good rest from the real world. Yeah, I'm going to go back to this world <laughs> with these people who don't exist. But they, they calm me down. They make me happier. They make me happier for a while every day. I mean, I'm, I don't work very long. Each day, three, four hours, not more than that, when I'm writing a novel. But during three or four hours, I shall be with these people who never existed, but seem real to me and maybe shall seem real to the readers when they are able to read the novel. And I feel at ease and I feel, and I rest there. It's, it's, it's a resting place. <laughs> Not a final resting place, but a, a resting place.